Now, welcome to this experiment on the dissociation constant of a weak acid. In this experiment, we're going to use the glass electrode. The glass electrode is essentially an electrochemical cell, and it's set up as follows. We've got one electrode, which is a silver wire with a sil solid silver chloride electrode immersed in a saturated solution of chloride ions. This produces a constant reference potential. The other electrode is a glass electrode. This has also got the silver silver chloride electrode inside, but it has a porous membrane, and protons can interact with the surface of the glass and change its potential relative to the silver silver chloride. Because this potential difference is measured, and because it depends on the quantity of protons interacting with the porous membrane, this means that we can use it to determine the pH. Before we go into the details about the experiment proper, let's just review a weak acid strong base titration. When we have a weak acid such as ethanoic acid and reacted with potassium hydroxide or some strong base, there is an equilibrium which forms between the acid and conjugate base. In actual fact, there are three reactions happening here. The first reaction is the dissociation of the weak acid itself. Ethanoic acid will dissociate in water to form the ethanoate anion plus protons. This is a very low equilibrium constant, so therefore this reaction will not be a major source of acidity or basicity in the reaction. However, now that we begin to add a strong base, this base will strip away the protons from ethanoic acid and produce the conjugate base with the salt and water. This is a very high equilibrium constant, therefore this reaction will be very much product favoured. And finally, this salt that's formed is an ionic salt. It will dissociate very well into the ethanoate anion and the potassium ion. What this means then is that practically all the ethanoate anion comes from reaction with potassium hydroxide. And we tend to say that the concentration of ethanoate anion is equal to the concentration of base that we've added. We'll see in a little while how we're going to amend that very slightly to take into account the first equilibrium uh, reaction here of the tree that we've shown. Let's go through the titration curve. The initial pH, of course, is higher than we would expect with the titration of a strong acid. Because we have a weak acid, we expect a higher pH. This initial pH can be calculated as half the pKa minus log of the initial concentration of the acid. We note that as you begin to add hydroxide ion, the pH sharply increases. This is because, in effect, we have a common ion effect. Our equilibrium involves the dissociation of the ethanoic acid to ethanoate anion. But by adding potassium hydroxide, we are also producing ethanoate anion, so therefore this will shift the original equilibrium back towards the product side, thus reducing the concentration of protons. At the half neutralization point, the concentration of acid is equal to the concentration of base, and therefore, according to the Henderson Hasselbach equation, the pH will be equal to the pKa. However, within this region, this region that we're going to be generally interested in, we note that the pH doesn't rise dramatically as we add base. And this is because the solution containing both acid and conjugate base is as acting as a buffer solution. And the pH in this region can be calculated as the pKa plus the log of the concentrations of conjugate base divided by acid. Now we're going to revisit this in a moment because this is an approximation. This is based on concentrations, whereas when we think about activities, we need to think about the activity coefficient, and we'll see how that equation changes. However, in our general titration curve, we would say that at the equivalence point, the um, concentration of ethanoid anion is equal to the initial concentration of acid, and the concentration of acid and base is zero, hence we are at equivalence. We note that the pH at equivalence point is higher than 7. This is because at this stage we have a, an excess of ethanoid anion, which itself is a weak base. This will produce hydroxide ions in equilibrium as shown to look at the pH, which can be calculated according to the formula shown, is greater than 7. Let's revisit this idea of using activities rather than concentrations. This is detailed more fully in the manual, but let's just summarize here. From the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, we've defined pH as P 
pH is pKa plus log of the ratio of concentrations of conjugate base to acid. If I rearrange this, we get an expression for pKa. However, if we correct for activity coefficients and incorporate the by Huckel theory, we can correct this, um, this expression. And now we see that pKa is equal to pH minus log of this ratio plus some factor according to the ionic strengths of uh, the species involved. But this looks rather uh, complex, but the i over i0 value is really just to give us a dimensionless quality. Really, this can be read as plus 0 0.509 times the square root of i over 1 plus the square root of i, where i is dimensionless. How do we go about that analysis? Well, we're going to have a pH curve, and you're asked to draw both the pH curve and the differential curve so that we can accurately determine the endpoint volume. From this endpoint volume, we can determine the concentration C0 of the acid in the cell initially. We're then asked to pick four or five points from this region where the solution is acting as a buffer, from before the endpoint value. So take four or five of these volumes and continue the analysis. We want to calculate the pKa using each of these four points. You're going to do this calculation four times for your four different volumes. pH at these four points, you're going to read from the meter. The A minus value in the log expression can be calculated as follows. We said earlier on in our simple analysis of titration curves that the A minus value is equal to the concentration of potassium ions because this is the major source of stripping the proton from the acid to give conjugate base. However, if we also correct this by taking into account the concentration of protons, we can see that both of these expressions give us uh, acetate anions. So therefore, the concentration of the A- minus will be equal to the concentration of protons plus the concentration of potassium ions. The concentration of protons can be estimated by 10 to the minus pH. The concentration of potassium ions will be equal to the initial concentration of the base we add times the dilution factor, where V is the volume of the base we add and V0 is the initial volume of acid in our conical flask. That gives us the concentration of A-. We can now calculate the concentration of HA, which will be the concentration of acid species, minus the concentration of conjugate base formed. The concentration of acid species uh, will be equal to um, C, and C0 is the acid species uh, initially, the initial concentration of acid. So we've got C0 times the dilution factor minus A-. A minus. And finally, we have the square root of I value. Well, the square root of I will be equal to the sum of the square root, sum of, the square root of uh, potassium ions plus hydrogen, hydrogen ions, uh, again, this reminds us that the I0 value equals 1 here, it's just so that we get a dimensionless quality quantity. We now know all of the um, components of this expression, so we can calculate pKa. We can calculate an average of the four values calculated, and compare this average to the predicted value, according to the expression for any given temperature. You'll know the temperature of your solutions, and you'll be able to calculate what pKa you should get.